Welcome back to the latest episode of the Engine Shed, folks. It is great to be back, and um, it's it's been a quick minute. Uh, well, where do I start? It's it's really hot in the shed right now, uh, and I have honestly just had the most ridiculous last couple of months imaginable. Uh, it's practically made it impossible for me to be able to film anything, yet alone like a motor review, but. Well, I thought I'd persist all the same, and today, of course, is all about the fantastic Hornby Centenary Edition Evening Star. So, let's cut the muss, let's open this bad boy up and show you just how fantastic this is. Back in a sec. Alright, this is actually a bit of a somber moment for me because this very well could be the last time I film a locomotive review at this bench. Um, part of the reason I haven't been doing a whole lot in the way of videos and everything else is because I'm very close to being in a position to dismantle this bench top, um, replace the Helix. The Helix has obviously been reconfigured to support more running, um, and that's that's a very big undertaking. And to do that, this whole bench top needs to be extended 600 mil that way. Um, so that's that's a summer project and I'm not going to enjoy it because it's really really hot and humid over here already So I thought you know what before we wrap up on the Workbench and everything else it would be prudent for me In fact, it would be fallacy for me not to review this locomotive when I got it and um, As you've probably already figured out in the titles what I'm talking about is This doesn't look like much I'll grant you, but um, there's good reason for that. When we open this rather unassuming box, we are greeted with the Centenary Edition Hornby Class 9F Evening Star. And, um, you know, I was super, super lucky to get my hands on one of these. And to be perfectly honest with you, it wasn't something that I had my eye on initially until um, I saw a couple of these online, I saw how much they were going for and I figured well Hornby doesn't really go all out like this very often so it might be worth buying just for the sake of sentimental value and future and future worth. Uh, and make my own mistake, despite the fact this is a centenary edition, it's a limited edition of a thousand pieces, I am fully intending on using this as a locomotive. It will be an active member of the steam locomotive fleet on this layer um, because frankly I love this locomotive this is one of the first DCC locomotives that I ever bought back in the day um, unfortunately the original 9F that I had then perished in transport um, had a massive crack down the boiler here like that and that was just because of mismanagement handling the tender was completely ruined so for quite a few years I've been looking at buying a 9F, um, specifically Evening Star because as everyone knows it's the last ever locomotive, it's well preserved at the NRM. Sadly it's not a part of the mainline fleet. Um, I would really love one day to be able to see this thing running on the mainline again but um, that may never happen. So we must suffice with a model. Um, now from what I understand this model is basically a doled up version of Hornby's Railroad. And that's fine because Hornby's Railroad 9F has actually got the same internals as their flagship, so I'm looking forward to this. Um, so, enough talk. Let's see what we get in the box. And the first thing you'll notice straight away is that this box, bloody hell, it almost reminds me of um, a royal box, if you will. And I hope you can see this lovely gold inlay. It's it's not a leather finish, it's like a fake cardboard leather finish, but um, have a look at that. That is something else, isn't it? Limited edition Hornby's Centenary. I mean, the box alone, probably worth 50 bucks there straight away. Now, I won't tell you how much I paid for it because, frankly, it's... Um, 
it's rather foolish, but <laughs> to turn down an opportunity to buy one of these would have been foolish in its own right. So, oh, very nice. So the uniquely, uniquely um, limited edition thing about this is of course the packaging you can see here. It says it's a trying, trying Hornby. Um, and funnily enough, my dad's first train set was a trying Hornby train set. It was the goods master with a class 31 and Brio Green. And I think we've still got it somewhere. Nothing works of course anymore, it's all seized. Um, unfortunately the camera's not gonna pick up on the text so I can't really describe everything in detail for the sake of the video. But um, a nice little blurb. This is what you would essentially get on the back of a conventional, conventional um, locomotive box anyway. And the first thing I'm greeted with is that really enjoyable but strange polystyrene rubber smell that you kind of get in a new car. It's it's very very pleasing to the nose. Um, now I'm doing this backwards so. We've got our limited edition certificates. We are number 967. So that might be a good uh, locomotive address for this one. Uh, let's just get the camera to focus on the... Now Hornby's um, no stranger to limited editions, of course. They've been pumping these out for many, many years. Um, and the funny thing about them is that within about five years, they usually rerun the limited edition. So. Things like the, the Great Gathering and the Great Goodbye, they're the really, really hard ones to find now because in a set they are worth thousands of dollars. Similarly, the more recent one, the Grizzly, the Nigel Grizzly collection was another one that was probably worth getting but I didn't get. The one that I have never seen since, which was a limited edition of 500, was the, N, uh, the wartime Black Flying Scotsman. And I had the opportunity to buy that along my existing Flying Scotsman many years ago, but... Um, I passed on the opportunity and I regret it. So there is motivation to buy these things because they um, they hold value for quite a long time. Even though the model itself may be just another rerun of a rerun, it's the rest of it that comes with it. And in this particular case, even more so. We've got a resin replica plaque of the one that's affixed to the side of Evening Star. Look at the size of this, this is beautiful. I genuinely am wondering how I'm going to display this on the channel because it deserves to be displayed. Pure and simple. Um, it, it is just a resin cast, but you know what, that's fine. If it was metal, this thing would weigh twice as much, but really, really nice addition. And, oh, look at that, it comes with a stand. Huh. I mean, look, to be fair, I could probably come up with something a little bit more elegant in the way of mounting this, but... Um, We'll just put that to one side for now because I think it's probably safer in the box. A uh, little wire mounting thing. Um, general accessories packet, and in the accessories packet we've got um, what have we got some brake pipes, a NEM socket, and a small profile coupling, and just a plastic name plate that we can affix to the side. So we'll do that later. Not right now, obviously. Um, now. The uh, crown and glory, of course, is the locomotive, and I will say this straight away, it's hard to get out. They pack this thing very, very well, so we're just put to be ginger with it. Oh. Without lifting the whole box out. Good God. That is such a nice packet. And you know what, if Hornby did this on a more regular basis, I'd buy more locomotives from them. Honestly, I would. If they went to the lengths that they did for the centenary and I understand that it's a special occasion but still if they had a premier range of locomotives where it was the best they could possibly put into a model in packaging like this I don't think there'd be a shortage of people buying them and I would certainly be one of them. Now we'll just put the box and all the paraphernalia to one side for the moment. Now the instructions again we saw this with the class 86 sorry 87 from Hornby Hornby's very well displayed very well read instructions they're clear they're simple they give you every bit of information you need to know oiling points um, details about the mechanism details about the tender and occasionally they do put uh, details on where you can buy spare parts and service which is actually very handy because getting spare parts for models 
especially in this current economic climate, it's actually very difficult with manufacturing the way it is. So, so DCC, DCC ready, DCC fitted sound. This one isn't sound, it's just DCC ready. Now there's two options they detailed here. The one I had previously didn't have a tender pickup because it was a RARA model. So the soda socket was actually in the um, in the locomotive. I believe Hornby did the sensible thing by putting the sound fitted tender with this model. So the Dakota and potentially even the future sound fire will be on the tender side of things, which I'm more than happy about. Um, so that's the instructions. We'll pack up the boxes a little bit later. Let's get on with it. We're already at Crikey, we're already at nine minutes, so we better crack on here. Uh, the snow globe packaging, or the, the ice block packaging, whatever you want to call it. Again, as a veteran Hornby unboxer, it's it's nice to see that they are long dispensed with the nasty cardboard and the nasty polystyrene. But there's still plenty of it in this case. What the hell is that? Okay. So the tender is actually attached, folks, so you want to be careful with that when you actually unbox it. There's a stubborn piece of foam in here that I can't actually dislodge, so let's... It is very annoying. Uh, we'll just get this out of the way. Okay. So this packaging is, um, it's, it's very dense cold formed foam, so it kind of expands in heat. But wow, there we have it. There she is in all of her glory. And immediately the tender is on the light side, but um, there is, hopefully you can see it, if I can just get it in camera shot. There is a lead running to the tender, which means there is a tender socket in the tender. And it also means all-wheel pickup, which is... Oh, it's the thing that Hornby does... The one thing that Hornby always does consistently well is the fact that they provide their locomotives with pretty universally applied all-wheel pickups. Now, there's a hell of a bit of heft. I think since I previously owned the last version of this, the mode has been changed and the arrangement is different, so the gearing now goes down this way, down the back here and into the rear drivers instead of into the central driver, which is what it used to do. And um, I'm not complaining, it's, it all works the same way essentially, but um, it probably distributes the weight of the locomotive a bit more on the back wheels, which you kind of want for grip. But, um, you know, for a limited edition, it probably isn't up there with some of Hornby's other finest, but um, it, I mean, you can see the coal's moulded in the tender. The tender's still very nice, but um, sprung buffers, but it's it's very much a railroad model that's been given a slightly bit more TLC, I would say. Um, a little bit more love and care, but aside from that, a pretty standard Hornby 9F model would be my honest appraisal of that. I mean, you know, the more the more affluent models now have the ridiculous but nevertheless still impressive um, removable coal in the tender, the, the slots on the roof open up, separately applied detail. Now while there is separately applied detail here it's not to the scale of something like a Hornby Coronation class or more more recently their, their 87 which I, I have just completely fallen in love with and that's a, it's an electric locomotive. But, um, you know, one of, the, one of the big things that I sort of try not to overly concern myself with with locomotives is detail because at the end of the day, I want a locomotive that can perform, but that can perform reliably. And if it hadn't been for the, the shipping incident with the last 9F, I'd say it'd still be going today. It was a very reliable locomotive then. I'm very confident it will be a very reliable locomotive now. So, that being said, the only thing left for us to do is to put this on the track, pulling a train with some pretty photos and videos for you to see. So, we'll leave it there. That's the unboxing of the Hornby 9F and it's lovely packaging. I would have to say packaging, just because it's Centenary Edition, I'm going to have to give Tormby a 10. I mean, they put every ounce of effort they had into the packaging and it shows quite impressively. So, well done Hornby. 
big things, big thumbs up from me. I wish the locomotive was slightly more refined, but um, at the end of the day, it, it looks as it should. It will perform as it should for sure, um, and it's going to be a welcome addition to the Castle Hill Railway fleet. Okay, so. Let's put this behind a train, or in front of a train I should say, and uh, get some running videos. Back in a sec. Well folks, that just about finishes it up here from me today from the engine shed. I really hope you enjoyed this latest installment um, on the Hormi Centenary Edition 9F. I absolutely adore this thing. I think it's an absolute joy, joyous thing to have. Hormi really outdid themselves with the presentation and the packaging in this instance. Um, so 10 out of 10 Hornby. Like a motive overall, it's just a railroad 9F. So if you are looking for an evening star, you're just as well off to buy a railroad version 9F without really worrying too much about the performance. I guarantee you it will perform well. Um, so that's about it for there. Before I do sign off, I just wanted to wish everybody a very safe and happy Christmas and safe and happy New Year's as well. Um, it's been a very manic end to 2020, something I know all too well. I know so many of you watching will probably be in the same boat as well. So. With that being said, I hope Santa was good to you all and left lots of red boxes under the Christmas tree. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, happy model railroading, safe and happy Christmas and New Year's, 
until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.